Today I'm going to talk about the video rig that I put together for recording live theatrical performances. There are lots of pieces to this rig and I put it together to solve some very specific issues that you see when you're doing this kind of video recording. When you're at the back of an auditorium where there are people sitting in front of you, I need my rig to be up on a tall tripod so that I can look over top of the crowd. And that's why I have my monitor drop down so that I can stand behind it and operate the camera while observing what the picture looks like in this monitor while the camera is looking out over the top of the people. A lot of people, when they're doing portable rigs, they take their monitor and put it on the top of their camera cage, but that doesn't work with this kind of uh, recording. When you're recording performances that are half an hour or an hour long, you need to have lots of battery power. And you can buy off-the-shelf batteries that are pretty expensive, but I already have a lot of lithium polymer batteries that I use for radio-controlled quadcopters. So I made my own power solution that clips on to the legs of my tripod and supplies all of these components with power. I keep this bag with extra batteries handy to me during performances and I can swap the batteries on this holder very easily while recording because I keep the battery that runs the camera in the camera. I don't take it out and replace it by any kind of a, a fake battery. That would require you to plug into a wall and a lot of times in venues you don't necessarily have access to power so you have to be able to run everything off of whatever power you bring with you. When I plug this battery cable into that plug, it's hard to do with just one hand, this little module powers up. Raw battery power comes from here, goes up this cable and powers the monitor through this jack here. This module also receives the raw battery power and has an output jack. There's a splitter cable that comes off and one of those cables runs up and supplies 5 volt power to the fan that cools the camera. Another cable comes up and supplies USB-C power to the camera. When the camera is turned on, the camera is using the power right from that plug. I can also turn on my monitor and it should power up. There we go. And that's what it looks like when everything is powered on. When it's all pulling full current, it's pulling 0.8 amps. So I can monitor the state of this battery just by watching this display. While I'm recording, if this battery voltage drops, I can swap a new battery in here without having to stop the camera from recording because the camera is using its own battery power rather than a dummy battery. This little 3D printed fan housing that I made slides onto the back of the Manfrotto dovetail rail. It blows air into two places. The air blows along the bottom of the camera across the bottom of the battery because I opened the battery door and it also blows across the face of the camera which keeps the back of the body cool. For best cooling I can run with the monitor out like this because the air blows across the body itself and I can I can feel that this body gets warm or I can flip this monitor and have it in there um, in that case, you get a little less cooling across the face of the body, but it's a little bit more compact of a setup. Let me also show you the zoom motor, which is up here. When I plug this battery in, that powers up the zoom motor. And then this is the little controller that controls it. When I hold that button in the middle, it'll turn on. This controller is pairing with that motor with Bluetooth. When they link up, 
the lights go solid. When I first power up, I need to hold down this button that's on the side. The motor will go through a calibration to set itself. It finds the endpoints of the zoom. There we go. Now that it's found the endpoints, when I turn this knob with my left hand, because when I stand and work the camera, I have my left hand on the knob and I have my right hand on the handle. When I turn that, I zoom out or I can zoom in, which is great for performances because I can now have wide shots of the whole stage or I can zoom in tight to get close-ups of individual performers. Finally, I want to show you the stereo microphone that I use. This is a Sennheiser stereo mic because I like all of my sound to be recorded in stereo. This is an external mic, so I do have to flip that switch to power it on. There is a little cable that runs down to the mic input port on here. Before the performance, or even sometimes during the performance, I can have the display up on here and I can see the sound bars so I can set my volume levels to whatever they need to be. Usually I'm recording in places that have really, really loud music, so that's why there's not very much going on here right now um, because I have the, the audio levels set down a bit. And I can come over here real quickly and set that audio level to whatever I need it to be um, when the music is playing. Just in case something would go wrong with this microphone, I have a setup that I can use to add another audio recorder as a backup. And I'll show that to you next. For a little extra security, I can add my Zoom audio recorder up next to the Sennheiser stereo microphone using this little bracket that goes from a single cold shoe mount up to a double. That lets me record audio from two sources, one going to the camera and the other one going directly into the audio recorder. Those are the main features of the rig. I think the only thing that I haven't really described is the tripod. This is a Sackler tripod that I got secondhand. It's a carbon fiber tripod, so it's super light and easy to transport. I have it rigged up with a line that attaches to the knob for adjusting the level of the video head. And that has a little carabiner on there where I can hook on a sandbag to give it more weight and stabilize the entire tripod. So that's my rig. I will put links to all of the different bits and pieces in the video description. I will also put links to the 3D models that I used to make these 3D prints, both for the fan and also for the power supply.